Hey fam, it's your girl IJF. Welcome or welcome back to another episode of Awkward Discourse, where we embrace the beauty of uncomfortable conversations. I hope all is well with you all today. I know it's been a minute, but child, as always, I'm always going through some type of limbo in life, but that's neither here or there. Y'all going to be getting these episodes pronto every Friday, okay, on time. Anyway, let's jump to today's topics at hand. The undesirables are winning. They made you, you know how the rest goes. So Ms. Risa Tisa made an introduction in our lives when she shared her 50 part video on meeting a Dusty, (laughs) AKA some man during the pandemic. And she went through a whirlwind with him. Um, And here's a look at the video. Please excuse the hair, but here is part one of who the fuck did I marry? Um, So I met my ex-husband around March 4th of 2020. We met on Facebook dating site and we also matched on Hinge. Um, I did not realize that he he was on both um, under two different names. So one was his actual name and the other one was a variation, like a nickname. Um, Okay. Now, what I got from this 50 part video was Many of us felt empathetic and sympathetic for Miss Risa because her story was pretty relatable, if you ask me. You know, as a modern day woman, there are so many harsh factors to deal with when it comes to dating. You know, we got the passport bros, we got the so called high value men. And let's not forget about plain old racism, colorism, texturism, and featureism. Let's just keep it a buck, okay? As a dark skinned black woman, I think I'm one of the most gorgeous species on earth. But of course, the Western society will tell me otherwise, right? Let's just keep it a buck. And God forbid you are, you know, plus size or disabled. It just adds on to why you will be considered undesirable. Now, again, I, I'm participating in this conversation because I'm a dark skinned black woman. Now, of course, there are other things that will eliminate me from certain topics. But I'm just saying on the base foundation of what's considered not wanted, you know, sometimes it does look like me, unfortunately. But that's, like I said, stereotypically speaking, in reality, they be all up on me. But let's move on, right? So we have Miss Risa Tisa talking about her experience with this dusty man, right? And for me, Miss Risa Tisa reminded me of many women that I know, my own circle, you know, my aunts, you know, my friends, my teachers, just people that I know in general, even me, especially when it comes to um, we meet a man that we think is different from a lot of these men with all these icks, right? AKA the passport bros, the so-called high value men. And of course, like I said before, the plain old colorist, texturist, featurist, you know, especially if you're trying to date within your own um, race, right? I can only speak for the black race, but I know when it comes to other groups of color, whether we're talking Asian, Indian, um, Hispanic, depending on, you know, your Afro-Latino, whatever, they go through the same stuff that we go through where, you know, they have to deal with systematical ways of how they're viewed in this world of beauty because sometimes it doesn't look like us. So when I saw Risa Tisa getting her following up on TikTok, you have all these airlines like Delta, American Airlines saying that they was going to flew her out. Okay, she got flewed out. I was here for it. I was here for it. Do you hear me? I was here for it. Pay that woman her worth and then some. Add tax to it okay because the girls don't really want to see big bone or plus size women win Risa Tisa has proven the agenda wrong because again she got her following up you have all these companies who want to work with her and of course you know people are seeing that she's a regular regular woman right and she's plus size and sometimes I don't sit too correct with people right Mm. correct so now let's move on to Miss Netta I only cook for you. Charge your lunch is ready. They hate no you. Charge your lunch is ready. Mm-hmm. The one and only Miss Netta. So, like many of you, I got to know Miss Netta with her well-known cooking videos that she used to do for her boo thing, Miss Childs, okay? She used to do daily cooking videos where she would show off her meals that she made for her man. And this was not no simple meals either, not none of that PB&J or 
Alfredo. No shade to my Alfredo warriors. Cause y'all think getting a bottle of Alfredo from, you know, the supermarket, boiling noodles and putting that Alfredo on top of them noodles and heating it up as food. I'm here to tell you, <sighs> Miss Nutter ain't doing that. So I'm just going to put that out there. If Miss Nutter ain't doing it, you shouldn't be either. No, I'm joking. But, you know, that's not really cooking to me. But that's just neither here or there. So, again, here's an example of what Miss Nutter was bringing to the TikTok streets. Okay? Take a look. Happy Tuesday! Y'all know we've been on the road, we've been busy, we've been having a lot of time to cook, but guess what? Today we are back. It's Tuesday and Charles had a little mishap on- Now, to me, I love everything about this. I mean, to a point, I was kind of writing down the recipes and saving the videos in my, like, save links. I'm just like, she makes some good food, but I will say, Miss Netta, god damn you got pepper she always used bell peppers and onions for me i can't be using that many bell peppers and onions in my food just too much going on but obviously charles like it okay so the aftermath of miss netta doing these videos of her cooking for her man it went viral so for me i love seeing miss netta and charles enjoy each other especially in you know in terms of food, right? I don't know if that's a love language, but for me, that's a love language. If somebody is feeding me, cooking for me on a daily and sharing with me, to me, that's love, baby. That is love. You know, African people, you know how we is. Have you eaten? That's love language for a third, okay? And I love it. But for me, um, anyway, yeah. So I love that she and Charles were just loving each other and sharing their daily cooking videos with us, right? And of course, another reason why I love Miss Netta and Miss Charles is they weren't con... They're not the conventional love that we usually see on social media or just in general, right? Even though they're very, very common, you know, they're dark skin, they're queer, and they're also from the South. So for me, very normal. But of course, when we think about the beauty standards in the Western world, aka America, this is not what the world wants to see supposedly in quotes because they're non-conventional you know they're not gym bars or gym fit or light skin with light eyes and soft hair which to me hey if you think you know some cat color eyes and some yellow skin is what makes somebody beautiful then you got more issues than vogue okay okay now let's move on to part two the same people who made you can also they can break you so what we to so with Risa Tisa getting this newfound fame, we started seeing her on real big media outlets such as Good Morning America, um, Tamron Hall, and she even got a deal from CAA, which is called the Creative Artist Agency. So that means she's about to be being, she's about to be in movies, shows, who knows, just a bunch of good stuff. Now with that came, unfortunately, this with The Breakfast Club. Take a look. Numbers. Just for the mess. I know this is On the Breakfast Club. I know they know the difference. Keep it a stack. All right, so this has been swarming around social media. It's been on every blog site. It started on TikTok. Her name is uh, Risa Tessa's. Uh, Risa Tessa. She has a, a viral story. Who the F did I marry? Mm -hmm. All right, so this is the story about her her ex-husband being a pathological liar. Mm -hmm. um, she took the TikTok, and did, she tells us how she met. They, they met him online. Uh, she met him online. They met on two different apps, though, Facebook dating app and Hinge. And he had two different names on the profile, so she didn't realize that it was the same person in the beginning. But it was a running joke in their relationship because he actually did come clean about it to her. She didn't even notice that. So she already, like... I, I don't like to call women like dumb, but oh, it's boy. like, yo, how you, you didn't you're even from know that? Y'all call everybody dummy. No, we, nah, but that's that's a good dummy. This was like dumb. Okay. Like how you <laughs> ain't even okay. know that the, the same guy you on both of these apps and the guy, the same guy is on both of the apps. He just used a different name, different picture and all that. But anyway, anyway, but she would know her husband. All right. Yeah, but this before they got married. Okay. Play number one. We met in March of 2020. Georgia got shut down, locked down um, two and a half weeks later. We got married January of 2021, and we were divorced August of 2021. So keep in mind that this story is spanning March of 2020 until about June of 2021. We met online. My tire blew on my way to our first date. And he met me at a gas station, fixed my tire, then took me to go get another tire paid for it and i just thought oh my god this is the beginning of a beautiful romantic story 
<laughs> By the way, their first date was at Cheesecake Factory, so she not one of them, you know, okay. care about that, you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> so she also had said that they, that he had fake phone calls, like he wasn't talking to nobody when he would act like he was talking, like he was faking phone calls in front of her and why, it, like the whole time, play number two. Every morning he would get on the phone with his brother, we'll call his brother John, and he would be like, hey, babe, um, John said good morning. And so I would just say, hey, John, you know, call out, hey, John, and, you know, he would... He would relay back and forth what I said to John, what John said to me. So he was like, I can't wait for you guys to meet her. Like, she, I know I'm going to marry her. I know it. He said everything I wanted to hear. Love Bombing 101. This man wrote the book. So he talked to his brother every day. He talked to his friends every day. It wasn't until he got kicked out of my house in June of 2021 that I found out every single phone call was made up. He was never on the phone. You ain't never talked to nobody. This man ain't never had nobody on speakerphone. How she know that though? Nothing. How she know it was fake? She she reveals that she ended up talking to um a couple of his family members that she had reached out to after she started doing some digging and investigating. But he he hasn't mm. spoke to his brother since 2015 when their mom died. Uh, he actually don't have no friends, is what she said. And then she goes on to say about the job that he lied about. He told me when I first met him that he was a VP at his company. He was looking to buy a house. His job was VP of a major condiment company. It is fair to note he paid every bill. He gave me spending money. Truth is, he was a tip. So he would call me and what? he would pretend Attempt. to reprimand employees who couldn't see that he had a Bluetooth thing in his ear. He would pretend <laughs> to take phone calls from the company president who needed his help on something. But he was a temp. He was a temp forklift driver. There's nothing wrong with a forklift driver, but he was pretending to be a VP. Damn. So she had got pregnant, right? And then they had a miscarriage. Now, when she went to the hospital, she called him. Uh, she had the people call him or whatever, and he acted like his assistant. And, you know, now he's a forklift driver and he's also a temp, but he acted like he was the CEO of his own company. He answered the phone acting like the assistant, like, oh, he can't make it in right now. That's because he really couldn't leave work. What? The whole time. Yeah. He, his baby was about to be born, but he couldn't leave work. No, the baby was gone. Oh. It was miscarriage. You oh. know what I mean? So, I hear. Uh, this is good. Yeah. Is this the story? No, it's more. It's more. Yeah, it's like more, it's more. So just wait. All right. So <laughs> we actually. He actually, uh, social media users, they found the ex-husband and they revealed his identity and he shared his own video and he addressed the story being told, um, play number four. I'm going to address the rumor, Risa Tisa, ex-wife, who straight line to y'all. It's, um, it's sad because it's completely false. Of everything. <laughs> More to the point, I haven't decided who I'm going to talk to exactly or go on whose page or whatever. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and let y'all know that she lied about everything. Follow her. Don't follow her. That's up to you. All that stuff she said, it's complete lies. What is going on here? Yo, he said they went to marriage counseling and it didn't work and we broke up. He said he left her and he said, uh, stop lying to these people before I tell them the real reason. You cheated. I caught you in the house with Bradley. Who's Bradley? Yeah, I don't know, yo. I don't know, but that, that's that's the trapped story. in the closet 2024. Yeah, I'm gonna is... be honest with you, man. I hear a lot of big back behavior. Does she have a big back? She do. She do give Sheila that was driving up the mountain. Okay, okay. Yeah, she, she Sheila did. was beautiful though. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. no. You talked about the big back, yeah, not the, big the face. Back. Yeah, she, you're right, you're she's right. cool. What's your thing with big back? No, I'm just saying because in a situation like this, some of you big backs, y'all got to stop being so thirsty for a man. There's a man out there for you. Okay, this woman believed all of this because she wanted to believe all of this. Big back belief. Mm -hmm. Isn't like everybody else's belief. Mm -hmm. Okay, she said it herself. He mm -hmm. said everything I wanted to hear. Yeah. She wanted to believe whatever was she coming out of his mouth because she wanted a man so bad. And then I seen him, and he actually looked like her. But what's interesting right. is he had he, a big back too. They, no, no, no. Oh. I couldn't see his back. Okay. I, we only saw hers because she was sitting in the car for the whole time she was talking. Okay, um, sun up to sun down. It now, when I heard this on The Breakfast Club, I'm a fan of The Breakfast Club because I've been listening to them since I've been 14 and now I'm 28. So it's been a long run. But when I did hear this, I felt a little uncomfortable because why are you calling somebody a big back if they didn't give you the permission to call them that? With the whole big back terminology, to me, I heard about it on TikTok and it was usually someone calling themselves that. It's like someone, to me, it's like someone calling themselves fat or calling themselves, you know, the B word. At the end of the day, if someone hasn't given you permission to call them that title, why are you taking it upon yourself to do it for them or do it at all, right? So with me, it made me think, you guys are calling this lady a big bag because you guys think because she's a plus size woman, she's accepting BS. 
And last time I checked, all women fall in love. And sometimes when we fall in love, we become, you know, the Lulu sometimes. We come, we, we, especially a lot of times we become the Lulu, especially when things are working out for us, right? And I can even admit that myself. Sometimes when I meet someone that's treating me right, aka love bombing me, there's a lot of red flags that I'm not going front. I just ignore. I'm like, oh, well, it's not that big of a deal. They still paying, you know, my rent, getting me shoes, buying me food, you know, simplistic stuff like that. And sometimes when you've been battered or treated badly so many times, sometimes you just want some good in your life and you would do anything to keep that good. Because again, we all know Legion with Risa Tisa, he was a dusty, he was a bum. There were so many red flags, but come on now. A man changing a woman's tire, is that really likely to happen in today's time of all these gender wars? Probably not. So I totally understand that. But let's bring it back to the whole big back comment. So we have the Breakfast Club making fun of this woman because they feel like she is depressed. I'm sorry. They think she's desperate. Here they are making fun of her. And they're saying that she's accepting all this BS because she's a plus size woman. And again, back to my point of me saying that anybody can be Delulu when it comes to falling in love. And any one of us can be played by a significant other you know it doesn't take a gender a size a race if you are human you're going to face things on this earth no one comes on this earth unscathed you know no one so to me i thought that was a little inappropriate and i'm happy the breakfast got um and i'm happy the breakfast club got the backlash they did because it will show them that in the future moving forward don't give people certain titles or try to poke fun at them because you think this because of their size they deserve to get all that backlash who are you to make those type of rules for any other human being let's keep it a buck now i love the breakfast club i do because sometimes they used to bring us the greatest interviews of all time now it's kind of slowing down but come on now envy charla what's the other one name um Jess hilarious who sometimes is not too hilarious and she could barely read but you and you hear that from me um who are y'all like come on just stop it i'm again they're regular human beings so people are going to say what they want to say about anybody right but in today's time we should know better and also let's just have a little bit of empathy right for human beings right regardless of size i'm just saying just saying let's move on to miss netta so now with miss netta when she started blowing up because of her meals and her cooking videos the same people who were rooting for her literally no lie i saw this on tiktok myself people started creating tiktok pages facebook pages and this other social media pages to kind of i guess i, I guess kind of like dig her dig into her past and try to out her people were saying allegedly i don't know i'm just gonna say allegedly because i'm not trying to get tasha Cade. allegedly they said that miss netta used to be married to a woman a woman back in the day and used to identify as a male right before meeting charles and they even said that miss netta had kids blah 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 again allegedly 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 i don't know and personally i don't care it is not my business to go dig in someone's past to try to shame them when they are giving me what they want me to work with miss netta is working with miss charles that's her man she cooks for him we loved it we were here for it so what's the point of now trying to dig in her past and try to shame her for who she used to be for me, I wasn't here for it, and I think it's kind of whack and tacky that people were doing that, right? But again, I think what this kind of comes, but then again, it comes back to the whole point of the people who made you feel like they can break you. You know what I mean? The same people who were rooting for Miss Nutter and Charles were the same people creating all these fake accounts and pages to, to you know, to bring her down and kind of just make her feel bad for who she is. And also, let's not be... Let's also be very frank about why people come after Miss Netta, right? They see someone who has, you know, acne, someone who probably, for them, don't identify in the gender, sexual, you know, box that they created for Miss Netta. You know, she's plus size, um, they're dark skin. Again, Miss Netta and Miss Charles are non conventional couples that are making the rounds on the TikTok streets. And for a lot of people, when they see uh, plus size, dark skin people who don't have, you know, the most uh, clearest face, again, Miss Netta has acne, they feel like those people don't deserve good things in life. And I don't know where that comes from. 
we all come from a world. We all come from reality. I grew up, now that I'm older, my skin is much better. But prior to that, when I was going through like puberty, I had acne, you know what I mean? And sometimes even when I have my menstrual cycle, I have a little pimple here and there that grows on my face. But does that mean that I'm not deserving of being loved or cared for or liked? I think not. But again, because for a lot of us, we live in this delusional world where we think there's a certain look or certain, um, I guess, body size to a certain caliber of success. That's why we people started attacking Miss Nett. I said, we, honey, I'm not part of the attacking world. Honey, check my records. I would never be online attacking people. Now, if you come for me, baby, you will get dragged immediately. But the point that I'm trying to make is with Miss Netta and Risa Tisa, I feel like people look at them and see a group of people who they feel that are not deserving of good things in life. And again, I personally feel like people do this because of their look. You have plus size, you have dark skin, you have people who are dealing with acne. Again, human beings, regular, degular human beings who live in this world, right? And they feel like they don't deserve those things. And let's not also forget, the audience, the fans felt like people like Miss Netta also shouldn't have been going to like club appearances, getting clothes, uh, uh, getting flued out, all those things because of how they look. How you yeah, support somebody in the beginning and then towards the end, start making fake pages to bring them down. Like, do you not want the best for yourself? Because I could definitely identify a Risa Tisa or a Miss Charles, a, a Miss Charles, Lord have mercy, <laughs> Miss Netta and Miss Charles in my family, you know, dark skin people, plus size people, just all those type of things. But yet people felt like it was okay to attack these people. To me, pretty gross, pretty beneath a lot of us, but hey, some people are very low vibrational people, and if they can't have it, they don't want you to have it. Kind of whack. Let's get into part three. Whew, let's be real. So for me, what I'm noticing is, so in my opinion, I think many people don't believe people like Miss, um, people like Risa Tisa and Miss Netta uh, deserve what they're getting out of the TikTok streets. You know, so TikTok is what brought us to these people, right? At least that's how I got to know Miss Netta and Risa. And people feel like they don't deserve what they have based on their look. You know, for many people, they believe there's a certain aesthetic, there's a certain look to success. And if we're being honest, many people from all backgrounds believe that, you know, and they believe that there's a certain look. And that look is you have to be skinny. You have to be conventionally pretty. And conventionally pretty could mean having clear skin, light skin, color eyes, soft hair, whatever it is. Not to me, obviously, ill. But for some people, that's what's considered conventionally pretty. Also, not being gay, right? Because, or being queer, because Miss Netta and Charles, they are a queer couple, right? And there are so many other factors, but those are the ones that I see blatantly pointed out all the time. Because I hear people say stuff like, at least in the comment section, they'll say stuff like, well, if Miss Netta has love, I know that my person is out there. Why do you need to compare yourself to Miss Netta to think that she would have, that you, um, that you have someone that love you. You don't have to compare yourself to someone like that. You can just believe that if you are a good person and you put in good things in the universe, that it will be brought back to you, right? But again, there are so many people who don't really think that way. And to wrap this all up, to conclude this all up, I definitely feel like millennials, Gen Z, the alpha generation, I hope we become the change we want to see. Meaning there's not a certain look to success, right? And especially when we're thinking about people of color, specifically black people, we should know damn better not to do these type of things to people, right? And I'm not saying it's just people of color coming at Miss Netta and Risa Tisa. I saw all types of people in those comments flooding them, okay? Shame on all of you. But hopefully moving forward, we have the empathy and have sympathy and just have human capacity for other groups of people that sometimes differ from us. I don't care who's successful. I don't care who's making it because to me, I'm not that prejudiced when it comes to who I see as successful and who's not successful. I'm happy for the skinny, you know, white chick as much as I'm happy for the skinny dark skin chick or the plus size big booty chick or the girl who is just plus size with no booty. Everybody needs to be included. 
and oh oh again also gender wise you don't have to be a girl to be successful you don't have to be a boy you can be non-binary transgender it could be any and everything as long as you're bringing good vibes to the world i'm here for you but i think for a lot of people they're not there yet because a lot of us have a lot of internalized issues within ourselves that make us unhappy for others because again I couldn't believe that we were rooting, and I'm going to say we and include myself in this, I was rooting for Miss Charles and Miss Netta, liking their videos, saving it, following it, and I even was blasting, Charles, your lunch is ready, because that is a good hit. I don't know, whoever is the producer on that, hit, hit, hit a girl up, okay, because I might need you for something in the future. I'm working on my own stuff, so hit me up, because I love that song, but back to the point that I was trying to make. Let's have human capacity for people. Let's be nice. Let's actually believe in the saying, treat others the way you would want to be treated. And I feel like a lot of people have been treating Risa Tisa or Miss Netta the way they would like to be treated. And one of the reasons I feel that they've been doing that or they feel like they can get away with it is because these people are not the conventional looks of success, right? We got a plus size woman and then we have a plus size, another plus size woman who's dark skin, right? So again, that can be very uncomfortable for a lot of people. Why? I don't know. That would have to be between you and a therapist or a psychiatrist, a psychiatrist to figure that out. Anyway, with that being said, Please treat people the way you like to be treated, okay? Please. And let's have more grace for human beings. Let's have more sympathy for human beings. Let's be nice and kind to human beings, right? Even if you don't always agree with it, you don't got to say it online. Say it to your friends. Say it in your group chats. Don't say it online. Anyway, fam, as always, please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. 